If you look at the agenda, the focus is mostly going to be on DLNR and the fishermen as to what it is they want and where it is they suggest. Okay, Bob Masuda is the first deputy right under Suzanne Case as director of the Department of Land and Natural Resources. He's a big island boy, okay, born and bred, knows about Kalapana from way back, even, okay, so um, we are fortunate to have him. He is actually Ed Underwood's boss. So when we couldn't get Ed Underwood here, we actually got somebody better. So um, take it away, Bob. Today is not a day to come up and for us to tell you what the solution is because the solution is going to be a product of all of the interest groups represented here uh, coming together. Uh, Captain Steve, uh, I just had a chance to meet him just now, but I appreciate it. He, he wrote us a pretty extensive thing which provides a lot of information not necessarily of the onshore, but the near offshore information that one centimeter, my God. But I had lunch already. <laughs> this no looks so on. <laughs> but, you know, we, we are looking to have all of you, and especially different groups like the Boating Association or the Community Associations, uh, determine who you want as your spokesman because after we're through today, after I'm through, I'm going to introduce our chief engineer for our boating division, Finn McCall, who's going to give you a brief overview of the engineering, the first engineering report on Poiki. We needed to do a quick down and dirty thing to find out what's cooking, what is a challenge, and that's what it is. This is not an engineering report that is telling us exactly what to do. It's telling us what is there as a result of what happened. Now, I want to introduce also Steve Schmeltz. Steve, stand up, take a bow. Steve is the district manager for the island of Hawaii in boating and ocean recreation. And he's a good guy. He's really open to listening and stuff. And Finn McCall, Finn, take a stand. Finn is uh, our chief engineer for the boating division. We, we will be sharing the mic back and forth. Give you a quick overview on the engineering report that was commissioned. Hopefully hear from you on your various points of view and enjoy. Uh, where is oh, hopefully after we're done, we, we won't need, I think, 45 minutes. But I, I would like to have uh, those who have something prepared to share it and leave us a copy, if you have a copy. If not, you know, we'll, we'll wait for you to email it to us, maybe within two weeks, if possible, at the most, so we can get going. Because we know for those who have commercial fishing as a way of life, and for those who stay alive because of their recreation fishing, not having a ramp is pretty severe. And so, our approach, my approach to this is first step back, take a look. When you look at Hilo to Kau, that distance, that shoreline distance is probably much greater than all of Oahu, all of Maui, you know, any of the other islands. And all these islands have a variety of ramps and access to the ocean. So there's two elements. What can we do as soon as possible? Is there a solution? Maybe some of the old guys here who are as old as me, who live out here. Is Steve here? You're coming? Oh, he didn't come. Oh, okay. He sent me some ideas too, so. Yeah. But if some of you have ideas of a quick, temporary fix, tell us. We're open to listening. But what we're really here for is to gather information and ideas and thoughts on a long-term thing. And the long-term thing, in my opinion, should be something a little more substantial than the former Poiki rap. It should be something that is going to take a lot of permitting, and we're glad Diane is here from the county. And we'll be working very closely with the county since this is their turf. 
and as well as the community people and your representative. Hopefully we can get the kind of permitting and, and resources and Finn will tell you a little bit about some possible sources like what will FEMA do or what they can and cannot do, etc. Uh, and then we will work with, in a minute, uh, with Joy leading you to see what the legislature can do. It might be an incremental thing or whatever. But that's why we're here. Okay, this gentleman had his hand up. I didn't understand what you meant that doing something at Paul Wiki is not a good option. I did not say that. Did I say that here? I, I think you, well, you may be hearing things. Okay. Yeah. You may have heard some people saying it's not an option. The report doesn't give it high marks as an option. Okay? I didn't say that. So we need to hear clearly. Hello, hi, everyone. Yes, uh, my name is Finn McCall. I'm the engineering branch head for the Division of Boating and Ocean Recreation. Just to kind of briefly go over uh, the study that was done um, recently by uh, C Engineering, who was hired to just do a very brief uh, kind of baseline analysis of what uh, potentially would need to be done at Pohoiki to make it reusable and, and an alternate site that was looked at. And I just want to keep in mind that there has indeed been no firm decision made on what we're going to do in terms of a boat ramp facility for Puna, um, but this is just kind of very preliminary um, preliminary look at it. So, sorry if I can't really read this very well, but basically just saying, you know, from May to August 2018, as you all know, we had the, uh, the East Rift Zone lava uh, eruption that completely landlocked Pohoiki um, with uh, black sand, volcanic debris, and the wave action and currents along the coast just continue to bring more and more debris in there. Um, so it, it, it's built a substantial amount of material and uh, potentially could keep building until it reaches a point where it kind of reaches equilibrium. Okay, so like I said, there was a report that was done by Sea Engineering um, that we hired to just do a preliminary look at what the options could be. Um, part of this was because FEMA wanted us to uh, give them some general rough order of magnitude costs for a project that would make Bohoiki usable and a potential alternate site. Now these are just two options that were looked at. This isn't the final, excuse me. Did you just say that this was done for FEMA? Well, part of it was for us to try to start making our own decision. report done for FEMA and was it transmitted to FEMA? FEMA does have a copy of the report, yes, but it wasn't done specifically for FEMA. Um, so yeah, there's two options, repair to boat ramp, uh, to repair the Hoiki boat ramp, and another option was to look at a new boat ramp site in the vicinity of Pohoiki um, that was in an area known as Malama Flats. And again, so I just wanted to note that this, Malama Flats is approximately two and a half miles south of uh, Pohoiki boat ramp. No, the, the, sure. Okay. okay. So uh, before we finish wrapping this up, because obviously a lot of people want to have a say, yeah. I just want to make sure you know that we have a copy of the actual study. A number of you folks already have it. And if you folks want to have questions as to what those actuals are, let me know. But I need you to summarize. Okay. I'll be good. All right. All right. So again, there are only two options that were looked at in this report. One of them was one project that would make Pohoiki reusable. And the concept was to build two rock jetties out from where the existing, this is the existing boat ramp, one out from the existing jetty, and another one along further to the south to dredge out a channel to Pohoiki. 
And so the one jetty is 210 feet, the next is 310 feet, and the estimated quantity of dredge material was over 100,000 cubic yards, with an estimated cost of about $38 million. And the next uh, option for a new boat ramp site at this Malama Flats area was to excavate an uh, inland area for a boat ramp basin with a new boat ramp and then an entrance channel that punches through the sea cliff to enter the ocean there. That was the second alternative that was looked at. So the estimated cost for that was approximately 15 million. So again, that was the, the other option that was looked at. These are just kind of the, the details on, on what the work would involve. Next one. So the criteria that was used for uh, selection of the Malama flat site was, again, somewhere that's relatively close to where the existing boat ramp facility was, uh, that had access via publicly owned and maintained roads, um, property that was owned by the state of Hawaii or other government agency, and had physical site characteristics for new boat ramp that was approximately at about uh, 10 feet above sea level. And again, I just want to reiterate that Malama Flats, this potential location was just a sample kind of location of what seemed to be a feasible site for a new boat ramp. But uh, again, we're here to hear much more options. All right, so just a couple actions moving forward. We'd have to do an environmental impact statement. Um, again, we'd hold public meetings before and after, um, out in, before and during the EIS process. Uh, we'd have to try to secure funding from FEMA um, because of the disaster and we lost Pohoiki boat ramp. We are eligible for some FEMA funding. We are eligible. The inundation communities. Yes. Not you at the LNR and Okay, that's right. And then once we um, complete the design and plans selected through the, the EIS process and the, you know, the, the community process, uh, we have to apply for all our environmental permits, including uh, Army Corps permit and Department of Health permits. We solicit bids for construction. Uh, we order, award the contract to the lowest responsive bidder, and then we proceed with construction. And here's just a, a tentative timeline, but basically, if everything were to go basically about as quickly as possible, we'd probably be looking at about a five-year timeline from beginning of the EIS process to construction. All right, and I'm done. <laughs> okay, so, okay. That's preliminary, and as he said, that was one site, and we are here to determine to ask you folks for potentially other sites. So I'm going to do, um, we have the questions and comments later on, but then I don't think, frankly, we are in the EIS site yet. So I'm going to do a really fast legislative update to basically answer Mililani's questions as to where the funding came from. Okay, so if you folks remember, anybody who's ever come to my town halls and, or got my newsletters have found, we had, we had money that came in for the boat ramp repair before this. We got an allocation of about 250000 for that. And we had an allocation, and I see, I remember Luana Jones was here but I don't know if she's still here. But we also had another allocation of another $250,000 for a safe swim study. None of which, even though they were allocated years ago in our budget and was released around 2018 before the actual disaster, none of which was used, correct? So we had this potential pot of 250,000 at least for boat ramp repair to start doing this study. So why, are we, why did we do this study? Because as Mililani and the prior engineer has told you, in order for us to start the timeline going because of FEMA deadlines, we need to start figuring out how much we could ask for, okay? So that's the reason why this was transmitted to FEMA. And it is very preliminary because we expect it to actually be more. That doesn't mean that that's where it's going to be spent because that's what I spent talking to Tom Travis, who is high EMA yesterday. Okay. We need to come up with a figure that FEMA determines was our loss, what we lost in terms of money. And 
that determination, hopefully that is a preliminary determination, as soon as FEMA determines what our loss is, then we could have some FEMA monies coming in and hopefully we can move on. Whether or not we spend the money on Pohiki or another place, that's for all of us to decide. But we have to determine what the loss is. So that's the reason, my understanding is that that's the reason why we transmitted this engineering study to FEMA. No, the, the five years is in the event we figure out where, the, where it's going to be. That is the projection of completion because of the public hearings and the EIS. That's not the loss. The loss is the actual amount. Okay, it's, it's not a time. It is the actual amount of construction of our loss. There is right now what um, Tom Travis is, told me yesterday that right now there is a huge dispute with FEMA as to the loss of the recreational portion of, like we lost the warm ponds. How much is that in terms of money that we can get? Okay, FEMA right now, according to Tom Travis, is fighting us as to the recreational portion that we've lost. Okay, so there is a dispute, but we need to move on. We need to come up with money. Yes, Mililani. When I look at the FEMA regulations, they're looking for the actual loss. Yes. What I understand the state is doing is looking at the old boat ramp and saying, well, what was that value that? That is not the loss. No, the loss is the value of the commercial subsistence fishing industry out of Pohoiki. And Pohoiki brings in consistently top third on the island and the state. This thing right. should have never gone to FEMA, but it's not a problem. All we have to do is look at how much fish we catch at Pohoiki and how much we have caught over the last five or 10 years. It's in your records. My God, you could have got the statistics out and send that to them instead of this. So, you know, this district, we have only two major industries. One is papaya farming, one is fishing. Both we lost from inundation. Okay. We need the money. We have the fishing figures, suicide and all of it. We had it too. So we agree, and we, we have the statistics, okay? And we brought this last time, and right there, second largest catch on the, on big, on the big island is, it came from Puna. And we had the statistics, and that is basically what we're talking about. The FEMA, not this ridiculous. No, no, that is. So there's going to be more. I'm assuming there, there better be more, because I agree with you. There better be more. So that is just the preliminary amount. No, I don't think that that's even an amount yet. We haven't actually come up with the actual figure of the request for FEMA yet, but that's part of the request because that is what you brought up. What Mililani brought up was the loss to fishermen of the commercial, um, of the commercial catch, right? And the loss of opportunity, which is very difficult to quantify. Or commercial. FEMA to show how much we lose from food on our table. FEMA does not take subsistence they have no way to calculate it. But this round, feed our people first, subsistence, second is commercial. How are you gonna put a value on subsistence? How? How? It's difficult. It's difficult. But I agree. That that is what that is what Tom Travis is talking about. This room to report voluntarily, you can multiply the figure by the commercial rate on the market. Right now. So we've got we've got the figures based upon pre-2018, okay, and we will we will we will we will add it on to the FEMA request. Okay, so I think we're done with my portion. I just want to make sure you I guess guys know because I got a lot of flack because basically we have about a million dollars just for studies alone. Okay, five hundred thousand we just had for this year for studies alone that we haven't touched yet. Okay, so at 250,000 for safe swim study which we haven't touched yet. 
So another, so we spent about 40 grand, I think, for this study. So we still have over $900,000 that we haven't touched yet that we could use to move on. And I know a lot of people don't even want us to touch that money, but we need to touch that money in order to determine what the, what the different sites are, yeah? So I think um, the next person on our agenda is, are you folks?